The world is hurting and desperately in need of a savior. Let's take the word of faith and hope to every nation and transform the world. This is the vision and mission of Team International. For more information, contact us at www.teamministriesinternational.com. Hallelujah! Can you continue to clap our hands for the Lord? Can you tell to the person next to you? Worship! Let's worship! Amen! Hi there!
The world has changed, so must we. Reach out to people. Tell them about Jesus and run with the divine mandate of team. Title today's message, Why Some People Are Good and Others Are Bad. Matthew chapter 7, verse 17 to 20. Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you know them. Now, some people are going to say, who gave you the audacity to call some people good and bad? My intention is not to provoke a theological discussion or debate, uh, but to systematically go through God's word so that you can assess yourself rightly. 
Because one thing that we as believers have done is to give ourselves man-made laws. And it's so common nowadays for someone to come close to you and tell you, you know, I don't drink, I don't smoke, but I don't go to church, I don't believe in Jesus, I'm a good man. And we all say, oh, Paul, that's true. Now, what makes a person good? And what makes a person bad? It's a debate that I don't want to go into. Because for the politicians, they have their own concept or paradigm of what constitutes goodness or badness. For the philosophers, they also believe that this is what makes a person good or this is what makes a person bad. And for the psychologists, they have a different ball game. Then you have this popular school of thought, the nature versus nurture school of thought. The proponents of the nature school of thought say people are inherently good or bad by the dictates of nature. They are true genes. Bad people are determined and good ones are determined. If you follow that type of theory, then <laughs> it's going to be difficult to say someone is going to be saved. So some people think, I was born good. I was born, it's my right to be good. And in some societies, they classify people into upper caste and lower caste. Then those who subscribe to the school of nurture believes that to be good can be learned. And to be a bad person, you can also learn it through influence. The external environmental factors can play a good role. I'm not going to say which one is wrong or which one is bad. But I'm going to connect it to God's word. Everything God created was good. When he created man, he said, you are good. But the first man made a decision. And that decision profoundly changed the human history. Change the trajectory of the human race. And from that seed, that seed of disobedience that was planted became a curse to the human race. And that was why many people who came after Adam were born in sin. Not because we sinned, but because the gene that our forefathers came with became a controversial gene. And that gene was transferred to the human race. But thank God for Jesus, he came to destroy the entire works of the devil. He came. And everything that we lost, he restored back to mankind. That means if you're in Christ Jesus, you are good. Not because of your own making, but because of the profound decision you made with definite consequences. That means you have to be careful about the things you say and about the things you do because life is meant to be a seed. The Bible says, as long as the earth remains seed time and harvest time, we not cease. That means, for men, let me tell you something. And for women, let me also tell you the same thing. Every man carries a seed. And that seed is what you give to the woman. She multiplies it and a baby is conceived. But if the seed of the man is faulty, then you're planting a seed that's going to be corrupt. You cannot lie to yourself or lie to God. The good thing about, or the bad thing about a seed is this. Every lie you tell in secret has been recorded in your DNA. So when you keep lying, you're planting a seed for the next generation. When you keep doing all those ungodly things, 
whatever is done in secret is going to be made manifest in public. You are laying the foundation of the generations that will come after you. That means if you're a killer and you don't want to stop killing and repent, you may end up giving birth to serial killers. If you're a liar, they'll say the father was a liar, the forefather was a liar, and he runs in the family. You have to be very, very careful. God is profoundly good. Likewise, his plans for humanity, but our wrong choices and actions are responsible for the negativity and evil around us. Galatians 6-7 tells me, Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. What seed are you sowing? We have to be careful about the things we say. Because we are going to be held accountable for every careless word we have uttered. Luke chapter 6 verse 45 tells me a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. Sometimes if I, I don't have enough time to want to know someone, I engage them in conversations. You can hide your fraud with your smile. You can hide your deception with your acting skills. But words can't lie. Behind every word there is a spirit. Jesus said the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. If you want to know the intensity of a man's spirit, engage him in a conversation. Out of the abundance of his heart, his mouth is going to speak. People will curse all the time. It's not a coincidence. It's coming from somewhere. People will cheat all the time. It's not a coincidence. It's coming from somewhere. People will lie all the time. People will mock others. Who say foul things is coming from somewhere. James 1 15 tells me, then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, brings forth death. That means your capacity to have life or death is in your hands. If you want to live long, it's all in your hands. Your capacity to recognize and manifest what you are in Christ Jesus makes you a good and productive person. Ephesians 2, 5 to 6 tells me, Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you've been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Do you know your position in Christ Jesus. The Bible tells me in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. So our blessings are in the spiritual realm. And that means if you want to manifest Christ likeness. You can't be influenced by what you see. You have to allow your reality in Christ to mold you. You must understand that we are from above. Though we live on this planet, we are not from this planet. The Bible says, he that comes from above is above all. That means we have to set a standard that is different from the standard of the world. You can't say you are good when you don't have a manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit. No matter how successful a believer is in the secular world, when he loses his capacity to manifest the fruit of the Spirit and the ability to win souls for Jesus, it is an indication of a troubled or disconnected relationship with God. To avoid this, we must always allow the Holy Spirit to direct our affairs and guide us in all things. You can say you're successful, but if you don't have the evidence of the fruit of the Spirit, it means that something is wrong. Goodness is not what the social media tells you it is. 
Goodness is what God says it is. Now, what is the fruit of the Spirit? There are two kinds of fruit that every believer must manifest. One, your character. Two, your actions. That's why John the Baptist says, bear fruit worthy of repentance. You can't say you've been a born-again Christian, and yet you have no disciple. Something is wrong. The Great Commission was not given to the pastors and teachers and evangelists and apostles and prophets. It was given to all believers. If you've been a Christian and you cannot produce fruit, that means something is wrong. But if you can't have internal fruit, how can you have external fruit? Soul winning is external. But what comes from within you is an indication of what is going to happen on the external front. Now, what is the fruit of the Spirit? God deliberately did not say fruits of the Spirit. That means they are all linked together. Love. Joy. Peace. Kindness. Goodness. Patience. Self-control. You can't say you have love. But you don't have joy. You're going to the psychologist all the time because you are perpetually depressed. Every month, you get into some mood. When that month comes, the children say, no, you can't go to mama because she's like a chihuahua. That's not the fruit of the spirit. And you begin to manifest all manner of things. And you say, it's hormonal, hormonal. That's not the fruit of the spirit. If you cannot manifest love, something is wrong. The nasty, petty nature you you manifest. Some of you are so vindictive. Someone wrongs you, you must put them down. You must say bad things about them all the time. That's not the fruit of the Spirit. The only time you say, praise God, is when you hit a deal. The only time you say, praise God, is when you are sleeping with a man or a woman who is not married to you. The only time you say, praise God, when they are giving you all the praises, you're the best person that's ever happened to me. Oh, you are so great. You are so awesome. You are so this. What is wrong with your ego? Joy is what comes from within. And happiness is a reflection of joy. I meet some women who tell me, my husband is making me joyless. That means you don't know Jesus. My joy does not come from marriage. My joy does not come from children. But if you have a good marriage and you have good children, it increases your joy. But Jesus is my joy. Because Jesus is my life. Jesus is your life. Do you have peace? Never peaceful. There are some people, if they come around you, you spend the next two weeks praying. They are so turbulent. Everything is a fight. No peace. Talk from morning till night. The time you spend talking, start praying. then you are not patient. Your spouse does something wrong. You talk all day. You have no self-control. I've been provoked many times. But every time people provoke you, you take things, you smash them on the floor, and you slap people, and you kick them. Something is wrong. Or for some people who say, I'm not violent. But you go punch the wall. My God, that's not just violence, that's madness. A combination of violence and insanity. Anything that can make you punch the wall so badly until you break your wrist is not coming from God. Watch it before it destroys you. 
I believe by God's grace that God is talking to some of you and God is going to give you self-control. Say, I have self-control. Say it one more time. Say, by Christ Jesus and in Christ Jesus, I have self-control. Ephesians 2.10 For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You were created for what? For good things. You were created to be a good person. You were created to talk like a good person. You were created to manifest goodness. Tell your neighbor, say, I am good. Because God says I'm good. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. So if God wants you to have peace, why do you want to destroy that peace? Why can't you find peace? Hebrews 10, 7. Then I said, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. A book of destiny has been opened for every one of us. In God's destiny book and God's destiny path for your life, there is no sin. There is no destruction. It is all good. You have to believe the word of God. Say, I have come. To do that which was written concerning me in the volume of books. The reason some people are profoundly bad is not because God wants them to be bad, but because they've derailed from God's plan. There is nothing in God's plan that makes you a bad person. There's nothing in God's plan that makes you a liar. There's nothing in God's plan that makes you a failure. But because you are not in God's will, you are doing some other will. The will of God is for you to be a blessing to the nations of the world. The will of God is for you to be the head and not the tail. The will of God is for your light to shine so brightly that all men will see your good works and glorify God in heaven. Men will not respond positively to what they don't see. When your light begins to shine in every facet of life, you will see the politicians come to Jesus. You will see the students come to Jesus. You will see the bankers come to Jesus. You will see the barangay come to Jesus. You will see the, the forces come to Jesus. You will see people from all walks of life coming to Jesus. The reason they've not come to Christ is because your light is not shining. Because you are too nasty. Because you are not manifesting the goodness of God. Everybody likes good things. If they see someone manifesting the goodness of God, they will naturally come to that person what fruit are you manifesting the fruit of a tree is only a reflection of its root similarly a person's character reveals his convictions values principles and beliefs sometimes you ask people why are you like this keep asking they are not going to change you see a tree cannot eat its fruit do you understand? If you plant a corn, it's going to produce a corn. So the fruit of a tree is a reflection of the roots of that tree. That's why rules and regulations don't change people. You must understand what they believe. Because a man who scams people you tell him to stop, he's not going to stop. He's always going to avoid you. But he'll still go behind and scam. You know why? Because he believes something. And most of the time, while you can see the fruit of a tree, the fruit of the tree is visible, but the root is never visible. Many people misbehave because of the hidden substance in their lives. They can smile, but you can't see what they believe. They can tell you, I believe, but their actions show something different. 
That is why Jesus did not say you should know them by what they profess to be. Know them by their fruit. A man who has no joy in his life. You should be wary of such a person. You should be wary of people who have no joy, who have no peace, who have no kindness, who have no goodness, who are not patient, who lack self-control. Men, please be the priest of your home. You get angry and your children run for cover. That's not what it means to be a man. Stop terrorizing your homes. Women, stop destroying your homes. Look at the foolish reason they gave for divorce. We are not compatible. That's a major cause of divorce. Is there anyone that's really compatible? We all have different DNA. (laughs) We all have different DNA. God has never made two people the same. We all have our different preferences. That's why the Bible says, let Christ be the common denominator. Be of the same mind. You can be different, but you can believe the same godly things. But you wake up and say, we are not compatible. Who ever said we were? Being incompatible is a stupid excuse for breaking a friendship. It simply means you are not in conformity. We may be different, but if we have the same God, we can share the same aspirations and the same goals. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13 and since we have the same spirit what spirit? Spirit of faith. Faith believes all things. And since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. We speak what we believe. We act on what we believe. What do you believe? Christians are some of the few people in the world who claim to believe something, but they don't act it. While Islam has become officially 2 billion, Christianity keeps reducing. A recent survey came. A report from Southern Baptist in the U.S., Last year alone, they lost half a million members. What do you believe? You can't say you believe and stop coming to church. You can't say you believe and stop giving to church. You can't say you believe and don't bring people to church. What do you really believe? 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So the Bible is our manual. It is our guidebook. It endorses uh, the principle of nurture. That means faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. That means the more word of God you hear, the more word of God you act on, the more conformed you are to Christ Jesus. When the scripture comes, it's coming so that we can become the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. What type of investment do you want to make? Your business will not last forever. It is a temporary venture. But a soul is an eternal entity and a worthy investment. We should make evangelism our primary focus. It is good to work hard and make money and take care of your family. But don't make it your number one primary assignment on this planet. 
It is not going to last because everything on this planet is going to be destroyed. The Bible says he that wins his soul is a wise man. The reason God puts so much emphasis on soul, a soul is an eternal entity, indestructible. A soul doesn't die. And God hates it if that soul perishes in a place of eternal torment. So do everything possible to win people to Christ. Some of you are so greedy that even to give, you don't want to give. You come to church once in a while. Then you tell yourself, I'm a good person. How can you say you're a good person when you are rich towards yourself, rich towards your family, but you are poor towards the things of God? John the Baptist in the book of Matthew 3, it says, therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance. What fruit are you producing? You say, I've repented. Well, you still talk the way you used to talk. You still do your violent things. That's not repentance. The Bible says, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. All things have passed away and everything has become new. I want to see the fruit of Christ in you. I want to see you manifesting the nature of God. It was paid, not with your blood, but with the blood of Jesus. He paid the price so that you can stop lying. He paid the price so that you can stop being angry. He paid the price so that you will no longer walk in sickness. He paid the price so that you can no longer be a failure. He paid the price and he gave you a new identity. Today, in the name of Jesus, I declare that whatever my Lord has not planted in your life, I will put it right now in the name of Jesus. I put an end to rage in your life. I put an end to lies in your life. I put an end to deception in your life. I put an end to everything that is ungodly in your life. I declare that by the power of resurrection, you are resurrecting above your limitations in the mighty name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 11, verse 6 to 7. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. As they departed, Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, What did you go into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? Some Christians are like the reed. Do you know what the reed is? It is this plant that grows on top of the water. It is moved by every wind of doctrine. God has called us to be solid. Because he wants our roots to be firm. We are like Mount Zion that cannot be shaken. If your convictions are easily shaken. If any time there is crisis in your life. You wake up and say I don't want to come to church again. Anytime there is a bit of challenge in your marriage, I think I quit. Anytime you are in a place of work and there is a bit of challenge, hey, Mom, I want to resign from South Salon, then you are like a reed. You must have conviction, a strong conviction. You must be a man of excellence, conviction of the highest order. I've seen many people pass through Tim. Any bit of offense, they just wake up. Bishop, the Lord is asking me to leave. I said, the Lord did not ask you. Your emotions told you to leave. I like real men like Pastor Sean. He's had one of the hardest training in team. And I admire his courage and sincerity and honesty. One of the most honest people I've met in my life. He came to me. Bishop... After I experienced certain things in common, in, and some people did some very tough things to me, I told myself that I was going to leave. But the Holy Spirit told me, no. By the grace of God, in the next one to two years, he's going to be graduating and going back to Singapore. And we will send him off like a general. That is how it works. And I looked at him, In my mind, I said, greatness is not far from this young man. Do you think being in the Philippines is easy for me? (laughs) 
Do you know what I feel all the time? Somebody who, before I started team here, I was already an international preacher with the biggest crowd. Thousands upon thousands of people. It's the easiest ministry you can do. You travel all over the world. They give you the superstar treatment. They give you big honorarium. You are everybody's friend. If I follow my emotions, I won't be in this nation. Because Philippines is one of the hardest places I have done ministry. But every time I want to make the decision, the prophecies will come again. Not yet. Not yet. If God says, you are not done, stay and endure hardship like a good soldier. Let your root be deep. Let your commitment be deep. Let your conviction be deep. The Bible says crisis will come. Afflictions will come. But the only thing that will never leave you is your conviction. I'm a product of my conviction. Like Job, I can say, I know that my Redeemer lives. Paul said, we were cast down, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. We are warriors. We are fighters. Be a person of conviction. That's why the Bible says, commit unto faithful men. Your gift cannot take you to heaven. It is your character that will take you to heaven. What is the use of your gift? You gather people today, tomorrow you scatter all of them. What is the use of that gift? Who you are when no one is watching you is what you are. If you're a man or woman and your children are afraid to come to the church you go to, afraid to worship with you, then get that relationship right. Because my children... I didn't ask them to become pastors. I didn't ask them to do anything. By observation, they said, we want to be like Papa. The best judge of a person's character, one, the children, two, the family, three, the church, four, the neighbors, five, the community. If you are failing the test in all these areas, Ask yourself, are you a good person? The mental and physical attitude of people make known their spiritual state. The visible is a mirror of our invisible substance. Whatever you believe, which you refuse to tell me, will be made manifest by your actions. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. By faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. That means the things that are seen were made out of the things that we do not see. You can see the bad attitude of your children or your friends or your spouses. And you're complaining about the bad attitude. Tell them to stop. They cannot stop until the root of that evil is destroyed. It's time for you to have a serious conversation. When a man sees Sister D, he goes to sleep with her. Sees Sister B, the same. Sister D, the same. Whatever name, color, size, shape. The man is sleeping with all of them. Know that something is wrong with the man's head. Wasting your time and telling him, why are you like this? That is not the problem. It's because something is fundamentally wrong in his head. He's searching for something. Somebody tells you, let's do business. And all your clients, you've cheated all of them. From Sosogon to Bicol, Luzon, Visayas, Mindana. You have a bad reputation for cheating people. Something is wrong with you. You post something on Facebook. They don't like your Facebook. You are angry all day. You're angry all day because you want people to like you.
find satisfaction with God. You are who God says you are. Psalm 42 verse 7 tells me, Deep calls unto deep are the noise of your waterfalls. All your waves and billows have gone over me. Ephesians 1 5. Having predestined us to adoptions as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. We were predestined to be sons of God. And sons must manifest the attribute of the Father. That's why Jesus said, all that I've seen the Father do, I do. They said, show us God. He said, really? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Can we really say now that if you've seen me, you've seen Jesus? Can we tell our children that? Some of them, if you tell them that, they'll say, so Jesus is like you? Wow. 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 No wonder. Sorry, mom. I can't come to church. (laughs) Hallelujah. We can learn to be like Jesus. By emulating his character, we can learn to be like him. Hallelujah. You know, parents, you know, when I was young, my dad was my hero. Because he was a good man. But when I see my children, the joy I derive, knowing that my life gives my children so much joy, I I told God, Lord, thank you for making me a father. Parents try to be the best example of Christ in your family. Be the Christ that they do not see. That when they say, when I see you, I see Christ. Romans eight twenty nine to 30. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed. Why were you predestined? So that you can become like Christ. When you start shouting like that, Spouses, remind your wives or your husbands that this is not Christ-like. Or when they're going through that mood, just read. Just read a piece of paper and tell them, you are great, you are good, you are kind, you have the fruit of the Spirit. Keep reading it. Don't accept what Satan says you are. God says you are good. Believe that you are good. You may not have acted good last year, but believe that we are good. Hallelujah. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Whom he justified, this he also glorified. So God has called you, God has justified you, God has glorified you, and God has called you to reign. Ephesians 1.11 In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Your mind is the powerhouse of your destiny. Because it shapes your beliefs and actions. It also defines your purpose. Let your purpose reign over your passion. Philippians 2.5 Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What mind do you possess? A mind that tells you that someone is your enemy because they disagreed with you? What mind do you possess? Proverbs 4.23, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Matthew 12.34, brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. Psalm 40 verse 8, I delight to do your will, O my God. 
and your law is within my heart. Which law rules your heart? 2 Corinthians 4, 6-7 For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. So you know what it means? This scripture is loaded and deep. Now, the Bible says God has put light in our hearts so that we can shine. Because God commanded the light to shine out of darkness. We were rescued from darkness. And he wants us to be like him. So that when they see us, people can say, is it possible for you to be godly in this earthly vessel? If they can see God in us, the hope of glory, no one is going to tell the unbelievers to come to church because everybody will say, we want to be like you. Have you not read the scripture that on that day, people will say, let us go to the nation and let us serve their God because, you know, the whole world is crazy. Everyone is saying rubbish. Who will be the eyes of God? Who will be the voice of God? Who will be the hand of God that heals? Who will be the hand of Jesus that will reach out to the unreachable? Who will heal this planet? It's sad when Christians begin to talk like the world, all in the name of survival and wisdom. That's not who we are. We're better than this. When we begin to say bad words, that's not who we are. The world cannot change us, but we can change the world. 1 Thessalonians 5.5 5. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Hallelujah. Amen. Every time you want to do something stupid, remind yourself, I am a child of the light. I am a child of the light. I am of the light. The light shines in me. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell you one wonderful story. Very funny story, but it's true. Every Sunday before I come here to preach, practically every day I test myself. So last Sunday I tested, went home, negative, preached, I went home, I started feeling these demonic attacks. The message was attacked. When we tried to rectify things, everything was attacked. That's why there was no broadcast because Satan is a very proud person. He hates humility. So everything was just going wrong. I went home, tested. I was okay. I tested again. Positive. I said, how can it be? I didn't feel anything. I immediately isolated myself. I prayed. That evening, I tested negative. The next morning, tested positive. I prayed in the afternoon. Tested twice in the afternoon, negative. The evening again, I tested positive. <laughs> this is not a joke. I called Pastor Efa, Pastor Efa, without even telling him anything, he said, the devil wants to manipulate everything around you to confuse your mind. Stand on, soldier. God says you are victorious. I told the devil, this joke ends now. I am the son of the light. The light shines in me. No disease can stay in this body. I took the test again, negative, 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 negative. I did many times up to now, negative. I said, Satan, you lose. Amen. Now, let me tell you something. The devil you are fighting is a very, one thing we must learn from him, he never gives up. So, never give up your prayers. Amen. Never give up your faith. Amen. Keep fighting until victory is one. So Steph was asking me, Papa, what was that? I said, I don't know. I don't know what that crazy thing was. Hallelujah. Amen. 
The Bible says in the book of Colossians 2.20, Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to regulations? You can't maximize your full potential isolated from God. It leads to compromise, sin, frustration, failure, and destruction. In conclusion, John 15, 4 to 6. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I'm the vine, you the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he's cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. The reason sometimes people fall is found in the book of Matthew 13, 21. If you have no root in yourself, you can fall. Now, John 15, 16 says, You did not choose me, but I chose you. And appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. And that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. The reason God wants you to have fruit is so that when you ask him for more things, he will give you. Because the Bible says to him, who has more, more will be given. In other words, the more productive you are in Christ Jesus, the more God is inclined to answer your prayers. Disregarding the truth through disobedience to God can produce catastrophic outcomes. Galatians 3.3 Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Romans 8.2 For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. John 8.32 And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. John 8, 36. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Romans 6, 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Romans 6, 18. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Romans 6, 32. But now, having been set free, Free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. Now, let me explain the final scripture Ephesians 4 9. Now, this he ascended, and what does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. Do you know what it means? He ascended, but before he ascended, he descended. The Bible tells us that we are the trees of righteousness. Jesus realized that the reason people were manifesting evil had to do with the trees. While he preached on the earth, he had to go deep. To deal with the problem once and for all. To change the root. To change the root. Jesus did not play games when he descended. Many people are standing. But their roots are messed up. So that's why Jesus Christ went there. To destroy every root that God has not planted. So that from, from this moment, your fruit will become real fruit. The reason some of you are still manifesting this nonsense. You have read the Bible. You've done everything. The root is still messy. But today, by the apostolic and prophetic guidance, whatever root God has not planted in your life with your permission and your consideration and your cooperation we are going to break every root generational dysfunctional roots so that from this moment you will no longer bear strange fruit 
Say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, we come to you in humility. We come to you recognizing that you called us to be fruitful. Today, we invoke the blood of Jesus over ourselves, over our families, over our generations, the ones that are here and the ones to come. And we declare that every root of evil, of sin, of destruction, of wickedness, today we declare it destroyed by the blood of Jesus. And we declare from this moment that we shall be productive in Christ. We are born of God, born of God's spirit, born of his power. Sin has no dominion over our lives. We inherit the blessings and not the curse. From this moment, we walk in the law of the spirit and life of Christ. And we destroy the law of sin and death. I shall not die, but live to declare the glory of God. I shall be productive. I shall manifest the nature of Christ. Just pray in the Holy Ghost for a while. Pray in the Holy Ghost for a while. Lay hands on your head and begin to pray that everything that my Father has not planted in my life, let it be broken right now in the name of Jesus. Let it be broken right now in the name of Jesus. Let it be broken right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we come before you. I lift your flock before you. And I declare that from this moment, every strange manifestation, strange manifestation of carnal spirits, demonic spirits, it ends now in the name of Jesus. I release you into the fruit of the Spirit. I release you into God's love, into joy, into peace, into kindness, into goodness, into patience, into self-control. In the name of Jesus. May you be productive in your home. May you be productive in your business. May you be productive in your ministry. From this moment it shall be goodness. All the days of your life you shall experience goodness. I declare that goodness is coming upon you. From the north, east, west and south. I bless you today in the name of the Father, Son and of the Holy Spirit. You shall be productive. You shall live long. You shall live in divine health. You are victorious over all your challenges. And let God's people say, 